In authority with Bishop Stephen A. Davis. My name is Michelle Stanton. It was on Sunday, September the 10th, and the service was really high. The anointing of God was in. Bishop Davis didn't get to preach. He uh, came down into the altar area, and people just began to come, and he was praying for them. Um, I was praising God, and I happened to look up and see him holding a baby. And it was a little girl, she had her head on his shoulder. And I kept looking at her like, that looks like Bella, which is my niece. Um, I didn't know my sister was at church that Sunday. So he held her for about four minutes and he was just walking and holding her and praying. And Bella, um, we found out she had to have a feeding tube put in. She was drinking her milk, but all of her milk was going into her lungs. The doctor found out that she had that and he said if we did not put tubes in, she could have the possibility of catching pneumonia. Here's a six month old baby, possibility of pneumonia. So back to that Sunday, um, after he passed the baby off, I looked, I said, that's Bella. And so I said, my sister's here. So long story short, uh, she had an appointment with her two weeks after that. Um, she went to the doctor and the doctor informed her that no more fluid was going into her lungs. They took her off the feeding tube and they scheduled an appointment to take the tubes out of her, um, her throat and her stomach in two weeks. So once the, next, the next couple of Sundays, October the 10th, my sister called me and she says, Bella pulled her feeding tube out. And I'm like, oh my God, because this tube is in her stomach. Um, she says she was in her playpen, just playing. She never cried. And she went over and she looked and she was playing with the tube. She had pulled the tube completely out of her stomach. No blood, no pain. So when she went back to the doctor, the doctors told her, we don't need to put the tubes back in. Bella is healed, Bella has no tubes, Bella can eat, her food stays down, there's no fluid going into her lungs. And I just thank God for allowing Bishop, Bishop Davis to follow the leading of the Lord because I had no clue my sister was coming, but God knew. And he was there to give the prayer to Bella, but I thank God that he is a healer and, and we're going to keep believing him for more blessings. Watching Moving in Authority with Bishop Stephen A. Davis. Here is today's powerful message. Our biggest challenge in the church is division. And it takes faith to believe in one another when you've been hurt. The challenge is not that we don't enjoy the sermons. The challenge is not that we don't read our Bibles. The challenge is not that we don't pray. You have the best prayer time alone. But why is that? If the scripture says that if two of you agree, why is my prayer so fervent when I don't have my brothers and sisters around? Just a question. Because it, it doesn't take work to pray alone. It, it takes work to pray with someone. I, I, I have to work on my personality versus their personality, so it takes work. I'm applying work, but am I applying work in order to get the things of God done while we're in the earth realm? Because the only way we're going to be able to get God's will done in the earth realm is we got to come together. And that takes work. It, it takes denying myself. Because they may not have the prayer room set up like I want it set up. 
They may not start off with prayer the way I want prayer started. They may not be dressed the way I dress when we pray. I may have on a tallit. They didn't wear a tallit. Is that going to interrupt our agreement for prayer? See, you have to break it down because it's more powerful to come together in agreement and pray than just to pray. So it takes faith because I, I, I'm now in a dilemma where I have to believe that a brother or sister that I don't really know, I have to use my faith to believe that we're going to get results and I really don't know a whole lot about you. Do you understand? So, so it takes faith. It, it takes faith uh, in, in the arena of church when you've been hurt by leadership in church. Now you got to trust leadership. It, it takes faith. Not, not just faith to take, pay your bills, not just faith to get a house, not just faith to start a business, because you can do more with us than you can do without us. So, so I, I know we've been using faith but are we ready in 2018 to be one? Because it's going to take faith to be one. We can sit in a room together, but it doesn't mean we agree. And if we don't agree, then we're going to limit what God wants to do in the earth realm. It's not about what God wants to do in heaven. It's about what God wants to do in the earth realm. And his laws of operating has to do with agreement. God loves unity. Touch your brother and sister. Tell them, God loves unity. Because according to Psalms 133, there God commands the blessing. So when God can get us all on the same page, God says, I'm going to do something. So it, it takes more effort, which is work. It's not toil, but it is work. So if we're going to do what the Lord has called us to do, it's going to take some work. Some of us will have to rearrange our schedules in order to do what God called us to do. It takes work, it takes work, it takes work. Some of us are gonna to have to get permission from someone else to be present when we need to be present. It, it takes work, it takes work. Because what God is calling us to do this year is greater than the previous year. So it's gonna take some work, it's gonna take some work, it's gonna take us uh, getting things out of our minds so God can put some things in our minds. It's going to take some work. It's going to take some work. Casting down imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. It's going to take some work. That's not easy to take our own thoughts in captivity. That's not easy. That's a difficult thing. You know that because you're thinking right now and it doesn't even apply to what I'm saying right now. So what you have to do, you have to work. You have to cast down imagination. It takes faith to reach in your own mind and come against your own thoughts and bring them into subjection to the word of God. That takes work. So, so it, it, it's going to take some work, but the work is exemplifying your faith. This year, we're going to work on what we believe that God wants manifested in the earth. It's going to take faith. It's going to take, you're going to work with people that you don't know. You're going to work next to people you may not really like. You're going to have to use your faith to like them. They're too fast. They're too loud. They talk too much, but use your faith. Oh. See, it, it takes faith to have relationship. That's why so many people are doing bad by themselves because it takes faith to have relationship. How, what, how do you know that, Bishop? Because I'm using faith because I didn't bring a team in this church. So I'm using faith to build a team in this church. So I'm using my faith. I, I am believing in Elder Stokes. I am believing in Elder Stanback. I'm using my faith. I am believing in Elder Reddick. I'm using my faith. I am believing in Elder Riley. I'm using my faith. It's not that I know everything about them. I'm using my faith. In order to get the job done, I have to use my faith. Okay. I, I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you to use your faith and get some work done. The, the work it's hindered when you don't have faith. When you have faith, you're going to work.
Thank you, preacher. See, you, we have to be careful that the world of Christianity doesn't teach us that faith is just for our own personal advancement. Faith is for the advancement of God's kingdom of which you are a part of. So it, it takes faith to step outside of your normal activity, to believe that God is able to do something exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or think. Some things I never would have asked for because I didn't get around the right people that caused me to think outside the box. Stay with me. It, it, it takes it takes faith. I'm going to get into a few things. I'm not going to get into everything, but I'm going to get into a few things. It takes faith to be married. I know everybody is celebrating the engagement, but it takes faith to be married. I have to have faith I still love her when I don't like her. It, it, takes, it takes faith to keep operating in my office of a husband when I don't feel like a husband. It takes faith. It, I know your neighbor sitting there like it doesn't take anything. Follow them home and you'll see how much faith it takes. So, so it, it takes work and, and marriages that fall apart, it's not because they didn't have faith, it's because they didn't have works to keep it together and, and it takes some work and you're gonna have to work on it and work on it and work on it and you only work on what you have faith and your faith says there's a future for us so we're gonna work on it because we have faith. Faith says, I can overcome this obstacle, I can overcome this trial, I can overcome this dilemma, and we're going to make it in spite of, I have faith, so I'm going to work on it. When I don't feel like speaking kindly, I'm going to speak kindly. I'm going to work on it. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to work on it. I'm going to work on it. When I'm tired and fatigued, I'm not going to take it out on the one close to me. I got to work on it. I don't feel like smiling. I'm gonna give me a couple of toothpicks and put them in the sides of my mouth, but I'm gonna work on it. I'm gonna make sure I'm working on this thing because I have faith that God has ordained this and whatever God has ordained, you're gonna have to work on it. God has ordained new birth, so we're gonna have to work on it. We gotta work new birth. It's not gonna be that easy, but if we believe that God has ordained us to be together, we're gonna have to work on that thing. See, because I, I understand faith and works, I'm not afraid to work. But if all I understand is faith, then I will never work. And if I never work, I will never have what my faith is trying to obtain. Well, Bishop, my marriage fell apart. Somebody stop working. Well, the church fell apart. Somebody stop working. Well, the deacons no longer deacon. Somebody stop working. Anytime you see any organization fall apart, somebody lost faith and stopped working. Because when you don't have faith, you will not work. I push because I have faith. I drive I 20 because I have faith. But I have to have some works to go along with my faith. It, 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 takes, it takes faith to love because you're going to have to love people who don't like you. You don't get an opportunity to hate someone that hates you. You're gonna to have to love them, so it's gonna take some faith. Okay. A 
Lady David said, it's date night. Let's go. It doesn't matter what I feel like. It's work. This is our designated time that we come together. I let you run the highway now. It's date night. Yeah. <laughs> we just, we just, we're trying to move in this faith thing. And this is how we move in it. We think faith means it doesn't take anything. Faith means it takes everything. Let me give you three things here. Get out of your way. I'm giving too much work to some of these husbands. I am not even going there. Just get that out of your head right now. That's just a conversation we have in you. I want to give you about three ways to maximize with faith and works. Number one, faith and works must be focused on the same objective, accomplishment. You can't have faith in something and not work towards it. If we're going to fully recover all, then we had to do some work. It was cold. But we had to implement some type of labor because we believe. So we marched not because it was an event. We needed to show God, here's some work that says what you promised us, we shall receive it. So not only are we jumping around inside the church saying we have faith, we are marching around the campus decreeing and declaring debt freedom, anything and everything that opposes the well-being of Newburgh has to come down now. So faith and works must be focused on the same objective accomplishment. What do we want to accomplish with our faith? Touch your neighbor, tell her, we need you to agree with us. In other words, when we say we need you to agree with us, we, we need you to be one with us. And it's going to take faith. You want to know why? Because we have visitors in the house. But we need the visitors to use their faith to become one with us. How can two walk together, Amos 3 and 3, unless they be agreed? We want to walk together. We're going to, affect, we're going to affect the entire body of Christ. I don't think we really understand why the work component is so important in our faith. It's because we're not going to just affect this house. We're going to affect the entire world because that's what our faith says. You can't come in and stand on a global platform and only affect the church. So we're going to affect the entire world. And when we talk about oneness, it's not just going to, have, going to happen. We have to be intentional. We're going to have to work at it. We're going to have to show up when there are meetings set up. We're going to have to show up so we can get to know one another a little bit better. There's more to me than preaching. I do smile and I do have fun. All right. <laughs> Bishop Long taught me how to have more fun. I, I'll admit, I didn't, I didn't laugh that much until I met Bishop Long. He gave me the liberty to have fun while I'm working. Yeah. I was one of those serious guys. You could tell I was plowing by the look on my face. But when I met Bishop Long, he taught me how to plow and laugh at the same time. See, but I had to be intentional about the relationship 
so that when you met me, it wouldn't have been just plowing and no fun. What are you missing because you're not working your faith? Number two, number two. Y'all still with me? (laughs) We unify, (laughs) yes. We unifiedly work on what God will help us to accomplish by faith. God is not just calling me. God is not just calling elders. God is not just calling deacons and ministers. God is calling us to accomplish what he wants, and we do it by faith. Most of the work we're going to do is going to be relational wise. You you notice that that when God gets ready to do something with you, he puts you in the company of people that are totally opposite than what you are. Somebody said, that's in my household. I'm being personal, Lady Davis, not too far, not going too far. Don't mm, just slow down. Don't hit the brakes on me. I'm an early riser, but I go to bed early. She likes to what, rise up late. She stays up late. Used to. We, we met in the middle. We met in the middle. But we had to work on it. So when I lay down, she has a television on closed caption. I roll over after about an hour and a half and her eyes are still open, but she's in the bed with me. In the mornings, I'm an early riser. I get up three or four times before she gets up. But we make up the bed together. It takes work. I could have got a whole shift in. But we're working at it. If she can go down and lay down with me, then I can stay there and look at the ceiling because no television can come on while she's sleeping. So it takes work. But I believe that my destiny is tied to that woman. So if my destiny is tied to that woman, I'm going to work on this thing, work on this thing, work on this thing. Because my faith says there's a destiny that we have together. Number three, marriage counseling 101. (laughs) Marriages don't last when both people are selfish. (laughs) Number three, number three, belief in our future is what creates, mm, this is powerful. I almost want to run on this. Creates the chemistry needed to work towards obtaining it. So our future can only be obtained when we're believing and creating a chemistry that causes us to work together, then we can obtain it. It should be fun working together to accomplish that which God has assigned for us. There is never a me, there is never a just you. We are all working together and we have a chemistry that makes hard work easy. 
and we get more done in a day than others taking months and years because we have this chemistry. I think it, you do it. You think it, I do it. We have this chemistry. I drop it, you catch it. You drop it, I catch it. We have this chemistry. It's almost like we're speaking and communicating without using words. That's chemistry. You know where I'm going before I get it out of my mouth. Lady Davis didn't know where I was going when I started talking. So we're working on our chemistry, but she knew on this public worldwide platform, I was only going to say so much. So in, in this next move, this, this oneness, we're different, but it's good for us. Yeah, it's good for us because God intended to take care of some things with us that all of us did not have the giftings and the components internally to do it all ourselves. God, God does not want me to get all the glory. You, you understand? So I know I need you. Got that figured out. So my love overlooks any faults and any inconsistencies in you because I need you. And guess what? You need me. And what we've done throughout 2017 is because we've been working together. And I, I know I haven't been perfect, but you haven't either. But we've still been working together. And if we use that same thing we used all year long last year, and we catapult ourselves into 2018, and we start to use that, I show up, you show up, we all do our part. We will be an amazing church before summertime that no devil in hell, no critic, no opposition will ever be able to stop what God has called new birth to do. Are you in new birth? I need some people that will celebrate the name of the Lord, that know that God has called us for such a time as this time, and he's gathered us together and joined us together, and every short is giving his supply. If you'd like to order today's message, call us to get a copy today. Dial 1-800-98-JESUS. That's 1-800-985-3787. Or log on to newbirth.org. The Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. We have loved ones who are present with the Lord right now. But we're still here. And we're going to enjoy life while we're here. And we want you to enjoy life with us. You still have us and we still have you. And we're reaching out to you today to let you know that there's still hope. There are greater relationships in the earth that you can enter into. I know we lost some, but there are many more to gain. And I think right now is a time for us to get closer. And because you're watching me, and I'm also watching you, we have an opportunity to build greater relationships. So get ready, I'm your friend. You're my friend. Let's stay together and see what God has for us. God bless you. We are New Birth.